All righty. And with that, let's get into our live solve here using Onshape. This is going to be a fun model. Um, thank you again so much to everyone who has supported the channel over the years. Looking forward to getting into 2025 and all the cool new stuff we're going to get into this year. Uh, but right now, let's get focused here on our live solve using Onshape 3D CAD modeling software. And we're going to jump into it here and model up this part here. This is kind of a cool model, this hinge bracket. We saw this a couple of weeks ago. The hinge bracket is a, a model that offers a lot of different tools that you can use. But what I'm going to really focus on for this model is the thin feature tool in Onshape because this is a tool that I've been experimenting more with lately, trying to get a little bit more fluid with that tool. And I think this model here is a great opportunity for us to use that thin feature tool. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a game plan. Before you create any 3D model, you want to start out with a game plan. And in the case of this 3D model, the or really any 3D model, the game plan should start out with you asking where should the origin be located? Located. Now, the first thing you want to look for is does the model have symmetry? And, and that's going to be apparent by these CLSYM notes. So there's a line of symmetry going right down through the model in this direction. So I think the origin is going to be right at the center of the model. The next thing you want to ask is, is there a location where there are a lot of dimensions coming from? And I think in the case of this model, there is a location and that location is right here. There's a lot of dimensions that seem to be coming from right here, right at this spot right here. So the 78's coming from there, the 40, the 150, all these different dimensions all seem to be coming kind of from that spot. So I think that's a good spot. You could also make the argument to put the origin up here. That would be fine too. I think it's kind of negligible, the difference between those two. So the first thing you want to think of is where should my origin be located? The second thing you want to think of is what's my very first sketch going to look like? And in the case of this model, I think my first sketch could actually look like a 40 millimeter line that comes to the origin, then a 78 millimeter line, a 150 line, another 78 line, another 40 millimeter line. And then I could round these off with a radius. Now, the reason I'm confident that I can do this is because this radius has a value of 34. The wall thickness is 26, and this radius has a value of 8. And some quick math tells me that 34 minus 26 equals 8. So I can just offset that information in by doing what's called a thin feature extrude. So my first sketch is going to look like this, this outer perimeter of the part here. And then my first extrusion is going to be a mid-plane or a symmetric extrusion that's going to go out to 80 millimeters. And it's going to use the thin feature option. And for the thin feature option, I'm going to input a wall thickness of 26 millimeters. Then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of rounding off the main shape of this part. So the, the first thing you do is you figure out what your first sketch is going to look like. Then you figure out what your first feature is going to look like. And then you're able to go on and start thinking about what the remaining features in the model are going to look like. So I think for my next feature, I'm going to round off this shape here. Then my next feature, maybe I'll add a chamfer to chamfer off, off this shape here. Then maybe I'll start getting in and filling in some of the, the insides a little bit. So I'll kind of fill in this shape here so that top is all solid. I'll fill in this shape here so that bottom is all solid. And then I think I'll tackle this kind of centered rib going up through the middle. And then for my final features, I'll add this hole and I'll add this hole here. So it's good to come up with a game plan before you start creating your model. But once you've got that game plan, it's going to be time to jump in and start working in the software. So I'm going to use the Windows snipping tool and just grab a screen capture of this print. I'm going to take this print and move it over to my second screen over here so I can get all those dimensions. I'm going to jump into Onshape. So let's jump into Onshape here. Here we go, Onshape. And I'm going to choose in Onshape to create this document. Uh, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... Let's, let's bring up our um, uh, keyboard here so you guys can see all the shortcuts that I'm doing as I'm going through this challenge. So here we go. We're in on shape and let's choose to create a new document. So create a new document. I'm going to call this 24-12-18-hinge bracket. And I am going to store this in the public space. So I'm going to create this as a public document. So if you're ever uh, looking in on shape, you can search here in the public documents and you can search for this text 24-12-18. And then you'll be able to bring up my exact model. So I'm going to choose to create this in the public space. And now we're going to get into it here in our first sketch. So we're going to just follow through the game plan. Front plane, begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch. 
N key, get normal too. S key, I'm going to create a line here. I'm going to create a line that starts here at the origin, comes over. I'm going to uh, create this using auto dimension 78, enter. I'm going to come up here, single click, auto dimension 150, enter. I'm going to bring this over in this direction. I'll just make it vertical here. So I'll just kind of like wake up that point and make that vertical, move my mouse over in this direction. And that's going to be at a distance of 40 enter and then i'm going to just make one more line down here again at a distance of 40 enter let's click on this point and make sure it's vertical it is the whole sketch looks black so it looks like we are in the right direction here with this thing let's make sure that uh our uh, corners are rounded off so we choose the fillet command and this fillet is going to be applied on this corner here and it is going to have a dimension of 34 enter and then i'll also click here on this corner and i'll just press enter again so that it also gets a radius of 34. so if you're following along with as a tutorial that's what your first sketch should look like it looks like it's fully defined everything is black and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump into the extrude command in on shape so here on the extrude on, on the uh, toolbar or you could press the s key now i've customized my s key so the extrude command is just right there waiting for me so s key extrude and then instead of doing this as a solid extrusion, I'm going to do this as a surface, nope, as a thin feature extrusion. And then what am I going to be extruding? This is kind of cool. In Onshape, you could right mouse button on this entity and then fly out the menu for select and choose tangent connected edges. So that goes through and, can, and grabs everything. And then the thickness here is going to be 26 millimeters. And I'll choose to reverse the direction on that. So it's going to the inside. And then the depth of this is going to be 80 millimeters. And then if I roll the view a little bit here, you can see I can choose symmetric. And that symmetric is going to make that kind of like a mid plane. It's going to start at the middle and then go out to that 80 millimeters. So I'm going to hit the green check mark. And there we go. There is our first feature. And then if I, if I click on this face here, and then I look down here in the status area in the lower right, I can confirm that that has a radius of eight millimeters. You can just click on a face and then look down here. I didn't have to click measure or anything like that. I just click on this face and then look down here in the corner, eight millimeters. So that's good. So that, that confirms my earlier math. So we are ready to move on to the next feature. So the next feature I create is gonna be a fillet. And for this fillet, I'm gonna use this option here, full round. And so with full round fillet, I can just remove this face here and replace it with a round that touches off tangent to that face so the first face side will be this side move around here second face side will be this side and then the faces to round will be this side and that all looks good to me i'll right mouse button in the background and say confirm fill at one oh yeah this thing's really coming together and so now i'm going to press the s key and jump into the chamfer command we could use s key for fillet s key for chamfer chamfer command and this chamfer is going to have a chamfer distance of 28 and it's going to be 28 by 45 degrees that's what's shown on the drawing there so distance and angle or it could be uh 28 by 28 if it was symmetric so i'm going to pick on this edge here and this edge here and chamfer those regions off so we hit the green check mark and there we go now one thing i forgot to mention in my game plan was that uh you know in my game plan i said i'm going to create that shape and then i'm going to come in here and i'm going to kind of fill in this region here i forgot to mention one thing which is we need to hollow out we need to hollow out this region here well since all of the walls are called out as 10 millimeter walls, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, everything's called out here is 10 millimeters. Here's 10 millimeter typical wall thickness. Maybe we could just do this with a shell. So let's put this back on our second screen. Let's go back into on shape here and choose the shell command. And then for my shell wall thickness, I'm going to make this 10 and let's start picking faces. I love the way on shape right away shows us a preview of what this is going to look like. I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks like what we're going for there. So yeah, that's a winner. So I'm going to hit the green check mark and look at that. We were able to shell out that geometry and that's all looking pretty good to me. So now I'm going to choose this face here. I'm going to begin a sketch. So S key sketch. I'm going to press the S key again and begin the circle command. I'm going to single click here to, at, at the center of this existing edge. And then I'm just going to move my mouse over and I'm going to pick up on this point here. The, the circle is called out with a radius of 40. That's also what the radius is on the front of the model. So this should just be a co-radial or an 80 diameter circle there. So that looks pretty good. That's all I have to do with that sketch. I don't have to add any dimensions or anything. And then s key extrude and this extrude is not going to be thin it's going to be a solid extrusion so i'll come over here to solid i'll choose inside of that circle and i'm going to say that's going to go up to see here up to part and i'll just pick the part here and boom there we go we got that nice and filled in 
And now I'm basically going to just repeat that on the bottom side. So I'll roll this around here to the bottom side. I'm going to pick this face here, S key, begin a sketch. I'm going to press the S key again. I'm going to start the circle command, create a circle here. This time the circle is going to have a radius of 25, so a diameter of 50 if I'm using the auto dimensioning. S key extrude. And then once again, this is going to go up to part. So I'll pick this face here. And yeah, that looks like exactly what we want. So I'll hit the check mark here. Now, to fill in this remaining region here, I could come in here and I could create a sketch that, that comes over, down here, down to this edge, down to here, 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 and then close it off and then create another arc here to close that off. And then I could fill in that region. Or I could just make a sketch of one line. And what that might look like is if I pick down here on this lower face, pick this face down here, S key, begin a sketch. And I'm going to press N to get normal too. And then S key to begin a line command. I could just create a line that starts out up here, starts out, you know, coincident to that edge and vertical to the center or through the origin, and then ends up down here coincident to this edge and vertical. You notice how that line is nice and fully constrained. Well, the cool thing about on shape is if I choose to extrude that, so if I go S key extrude, I'm not going to use this, what's in here right now. I'm going to press the space bar to clear that. You could click this X or just press the space bar. And then I can just pick right here. And on shape automatically breaks out that region between the sketch and the existing edges. So I don't have to sketch any of that extra stuff. I can just pick that, that region there. And then I could choose to bring that up to face and pick this face right here. And yes, that looks great. That's perfect. I love it. So that definitely works. And then for our final feature, uh, well, for, for sorry, our final tricky feature, the kind of rib looking feature, I'm just going to go back and use that original sketch. Remember we created this original sketch here? I'm just going to go back and use that original sketch. So if I pick this face here and I pick this face here, I can look down in the uh, status area and I can see the distance between those faces is 16 millimeters. And that checks out 26 minus 10 is 16 millimeters. So now what I could do is I can take this original sketch here and, and I can either click it or not click it ahead of time. I'm going to not click it ahead of time. I can press the S key extrude and then I can say I want to make another thin feature. And now I can start picking these edges of that original sketch go around and pick these edges of that original sketch. And now instead of saying that I want the thickness to be five, I'm gonna make the thickness 16, enter. Look at that, look how thick that is. And then I'm gonna say I want that to reverse direction so it goes down into the part. And then instead of saying I want the depth to be 25, I'm gonna say I want that to be 10 to match the, the wall thickness of that rib. And just like we did earlier, I'm gonna say I want that to be symmetric. So I think this is a cool model not only because I like the geometry, but also because it gives you a chance to kind of work on your game when it comes to on shape and the thin feature. And there's some pretty cool time saving tricks you can use if you start getting used to that. It's a relatively new feature, the thin feature. I think it came out um, earlier this year, maybe last year, but relatively new feature in on shape, but definitely a really useful feature that I think deserves a little bit of practice because then you can work it into your overall arsenal in on shape. So I'm going to hit the green check mark. There we go. That finishes that feature. And now this thing's just a walk in a park. All we got to do is just pick this face, S key, begin to sketch, S key, circle, pick this point here, move our mouse, click, let go of our mouse, type in the diameter of that circle, 16, enter, S key, extrude. This is going to be, uh, again, it's going to switch over to solid. So you're going to have to pick that arc or inside that region again. And this is going to be a remove up to face. And we'll bring that right up to this face here and hit the check mark. And then we can do the exact same thing on the other side. So we can pick this face here, S key, begin a sketch, S key, circle, single click, move our mouse, single click, let go of our mouse, type in the diameter, 50, S key, extrude. This is gonna go remove up to face, and that face is gonna be this face here. We could probably also use up to next, or um, there may be some other dynamic end conditions there, but that works for me. I'm gonna press the P key on my keyboard to hide my planes. You can see I've still got some sketches and the origin shown, so I'm gonna press Shift P to hide all my reference geometry. I'm going to come down here to the name of the part, right mouse button, and I'm going to say assign or edit appearance. And I'm going to just change the appearance here to match kind of what the customer gave me. The customers always like it when you match their, their color or at least get close to the colors of their parts. Make that a little bit closer. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to right mouse button down here where it says part one, and I'm going to say assign material. And the material for this part is called out as 1060 aluminum. So TTT custom materials, aluminum 1060, hit the green check mark. And then finally, we'll go down here in the corner. We're going to click on this button for mass properties. 
Click on that button for Mass Properties. We'll click on this part, and we're coming up with an answer of 1083 grams. I'll type that into the chat, and let's see if we got it correct. So we're going to go back here to our presentation, and the correct answer for this model is 1083 grams. So yes, we did it. We got it correct. Good job, Toby. And I hope that you guys enjoyed that tutorial, that live solve in on shape. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you learned anything from this live solve. And of course, if you're joining us here on Model Monday Live, be sure to put a one in the chat if you liked that live solve. That's a pretty fun part, that hinge bracket part. And uh, like I said, I think it shows you a lot of cool stuff you can do with Onshape and with the thin feature tool. Sometimes we overlook that thin feature tool, but it's got some some pretty powerful functionality. Just, just about doing the reps, right? Just about doing the reps and learning how to use it. All right, guys, and that brings us to our final challenge for you, the answer to our second